Okay, so the grand total with grand the leftover total. console uh, with the console credit and the leftover credit that you had last time, right. you have five hundred five hundred seventy three dollars on your account. That's how it's done, kids. I, I do often find myself saying, should I get a real job? However, it does have many positives to it. I love when my room or the video games grow. I love to see the growth. That keeps me motivated as well as the money, of course. Alrighty guys, we just got a deal here. Got a couple of Game Boys. Gotta hit up the bank and then we'll uh, head over there, so. And Tim Hortons. Tim Hortons, are you kidding me? One day I was at a local thrift store and I bought a game that I already knew I had, but it was $5. That night I actually listed it on eBay and it sold for $35. So right then and there I knew that off one item I made at least an hour's wage, so I knew if I could mass produce that, I would be making good money. I would consider myself an e-commerce entrepreneur. I buy large quantities of video games, iPods, tablets, pretty much you name it, I buy it. And I resell it on many platforms such as Amazon, eBay, even locally on Kijiji and such. So this deal's actually for some sealed Game Boy stuff, which is, I mean, the Game Boy originated in like 1989, I believe. So this stuff's been brand new and sealed for a long time, which actually makes it why it's valuable. So before this, I was working part-time at Canadian Tire, making minimum wage, and I was actually collecting vintage video games as a hobby. It actually helped me get through college. It actually was my main income. Once I was graduated, I was at the point to already be making good money. So I really just continued. Well, my parents were not too happy about it. They never really fully supported it, I would say. However, I learned the market and eventually my parents did uh, approve once they saw some decent money coming in. So I would say two to three times a week, we would what we call pawn run. We'd do a circle and hit about eight pawn shops. Luckily, it doesn't really matter because I've made pretty good relationships with all these guys over the years. So they honestly just hold much of the stuff that they know I'm interested in. So what do you got new for me today? I don't know what you want. What do you got? It's a real question. I don't have nothing today for you. Nothing today for me? Yeah, right. You always have no, something. That's a big key to this business is making and building relationships with these guys because at the end of the day, that's who gets your product for you. And that's, I guess, how the whole business runs. We are on our way right now to the Gibraltar market. We have, I think, two or three systems and probably 10 or 20 games to trade in. My girlfriend Emily helps me immensely. She's actually, I would say, my key organization. She's always making sure things get out on time. And I would actually say, in some ways, my boss, <laughs> as funny as that sounds, I'm Emily. I'm the brains behind the operation. Um, no, just kidding. Tyler knows what he's doing. I just um, help out with uh, getting things organized and keeping things rolling. A <laughs> couple of years ago when he started um, in his business insurance course, I <laughs> did not expect that this was gonna be <laughs> the career path that he went down. I would prefer this over you know, him going and working a nine to five and coming home at the end of the day. I love that we can just run the roads and be out and about all day and kind of call it a job. <laughs> so how much are you hoping to get for what you're bringing in today? Um, I mean, it's really not much. I would be probably very happy with 
around a hundred dollars. A hundred dollars credit. Right. right. So we never actually take cash. That's how this kind of um, benefits both parties, I exactly. guess you could say. Yeah. So they get rid of um, some of their newer stock that might not go as fast there, but will uh, sell really quickly for Tyler in exchange for some less um, valuable valuable stock. games uh, that'll do better at the market. Yeah, it's an interesting name on that game, eh? I'll do six on it. Six? All right. Okay, so you're at 46, or 48. Right. 48, and then Pokemon Y, I know that's obviously a little bit better. I'll do uh, 10 on that. 10 on that, all right. 56? Sure. Three. Okay, because it's easy. <laughs> See, you always got to haggle. Yeah. <laughs> so, what are we, where are we at? 56. So, so I also do have paid advertisements on Kijiji. I'm in probably 20 or 30 swap and trade Facebook groups. I'm even in mom groups and I'm definitely not a mom. So I'm always looking anywhere possible to get new inventory. It's not so much like where are the video games, it's you're looking for certain quality in video games, certain titles, certain manufacturers, I guess. I primarily look for the retro stuff, especially Nintendo, as it's my, I would consider my top seller. Nostalgia for sure is what runs this market. Everybody wants to relive that childhood game or show the game that they played as a kid to their kid. That's what I find I mainly am selling to these days is dads that are going, hey, I wanted to show my kid this game. And now I want to experience and share that nostalgia with them. I do approximately 15,000 in sales on eBay a month, um, approximately 5,000 in sales on Amazon a month, and then maybe a two or 3,000 locally. So all in all, 20 to 25,000 a month would be an average good month. As many benefits as there are in this career, I guess you could say, such as freedom, there is many disadvantages. So one that I got caught in was taxes of last season. I did not know that you had to charge HST tax on a used good. So at the end of the year, I did a little bit over 200,000 in sales. However, I was not charging the 13% tax that I should have been. So I got hit with a mean tax bill. So it does kind of take over our lives in um, more way than one. So not only that we're, you know, like always out on the hunt or that maybe a Kijiji deal, the best video game deal comes up when I'm, you know, just making dinner and have to turn it off and run out the door because we can't pass it up. And uh, of course, my house is always filled with lots of video games and boxes of stuff that's either coming or going and envelopes piled high that needs to be shipped out and um, it can definitely be a little bit uh, messy and stressful but I wouldn't trade it for having him gone all day. Honestly, the, the more product you can have and the more video games you have, it, it you always do more sales. This was one shelf at one time and now I have four shelves. And honestly, I always wanna grow and grow and grow because it's a snowball effect. The more, the more you have, the more money you make, the more money you can keep buying. I wanna say I wanna get as big as possible, but with the digital downloads, it's a little scary to me, so, I would love to somehow secure my financial well-being, but in return, keep growing. We shipped just around 60 packages or so. Uh, got a very nice long receipt here with all my tracking numbers. Um, total here was $334.46. So um, this is all money that the buyers have already sent me. Of course, it's out, not out of my pocket in any way. Um, other than that, I'm gonna go home right now and send them their tracking number, and then they're gonna hopefully receive their product and be very happy with it. And from there, the full transaction is complete, I guess. So you've seen from me buying it to me selling it now. And 
I guess that's a wrap.